Today, I bring you to a very special part of my house to talk about a passion that I've cultivated for the past few months and I don't think I've really mentioned on this channel thus far. So I thought I'd do an introduction about my love of cigars. I mean, you'll know that I love the finer things in life anyway. The cigar hobby is by no exception. It's something that I started looking into at the beginning of the year and, and I realised it's kind of an uncommon hobby, especially for ladies, since it's mostly associated with men in high society. It's quite a masculine thing to do, as you imagine in popular culture. But I've always really liked doing things that are a little bit outside of the norm and it's something that I've always wanted to try once I had the means to be able to do it so I tried my first cigar early in the year I think it was must have been like Jan or February and I've been hooked ever since not in the nicotine way might I add but I appreciate that talking about cigars isn't like necessarily talking about a bag or a pair of shoes so as a full disclaimer before I get further into the why I love cigars and talking about my collection. I just wanted to give that full disclaimer that obviously I'm talking about essentially, you know, tobacco, it has nicotine in it. And as you can imagine from like even normal cigarettes, even though there is a big difference between cigarettes and cigars, I'll get into a little bit later in this video. Of course, they still have damaging aspects. I wanna make sure hopefully everybody watching this is over 18. Hopefully this video is useful for those of you out there who have messaged me in the past wanting to know about cigars, how I got into them, how to get into them if you are so inclined. A couple of weeks ago at the time of filming came back from a wonderful trip to Cuba. I spent about 10, 11 days there and it was sublime. I highly recommend it. It is such an underrated country and even though Cuba is known for its rum and its revolutions, obviously Cuba is known primarily for its cigars. That's why I've come back with a ton of cigars from Cuba. Obviously they are also, because you're going direct to that country, you don't have to pay a lot of the, the export taxes that are levied on countries like the UK. Even going through the airport, when you can shop tax-free, there are so many options available from, I guess like the old world, traditional cigars that are from Cuba and also the new world, which are more the rest of the Latin America. So before I get into the reasons why I personally started smoking cigars, I feel like it's probably important for those of you out there who don't know much about cigars at all for me to do a little bit of a 101 or intro because I feel like some of these things when you go into a cigar shop or a lounge it might be kind of daunting to ask these things there certainly there is so much of an etiquette culture that I felt personally for me when I started you know I was like oh I don't really want to go into a shop and ask a silly question even though there's no such thing as a silly question if you're just getting into it everyone's super friendly I found so to help in talking about what a cigar actually is I thought I may as well bring you out a piece of eye candy and for those who are in the know you will know that this is a Cohiba and it's in the Robusto size I believe a Cohiba is the big dog of all cigars, it's the one Fidel Castro smoked. So the reason why cigars are very different from any other kind of tobacco products is because they are made of the dry and fermented tobacco leaves. And the content of a cigar is pure tobacco, whereas 95% of nicotine is stripped out of the cigars, which is great because it's not addicting. With a cigarette, because of all the chemicals and additives, it doesn't actually go out. It stays lit for quite a while, whereas the usual cigar, once you leave it resting on your ashtray for a bit of time, it will naturally go out because all it is is the natural tobacco leaves. And I guess there is somewhat of a misconception as a result that cigars aren't that harmful compared to cigarettes. Obviously both present a health risk. You can get, I think, some sort of throat and lung infections or even cancers, so obviously be wise in that way. But provided you're smoking the cigar in the correct way and you don't inhale, uh, then you should be a lot better in terms of risk because also when you do smoke a cigar, because it's not addictive, people then don't necessarily have one every single day, unless, of course, you are Fidel Castro. <laughs> a lot of people will just have them for special occasions. That's why these, I guess, on the probability scale, are less impactful on your health. I think a lot of people might assume it is the same or similar 
to the cigarette. The only thing that is similar is the fact that it contains tobacco. However, this one is pure tobacco and it is made of three different components. So there are three distinctive elements of the cigar and we'll work our way inside to out. So inside the cigar are several layers of what is known as filler. So that's lots of the tobacco leaf. Depending on the part of the tobacco plant, there are different leaves with different strengths because different brands go for different ones and that's how you get your different notes and so the filler is wrapped very very tightly within each other in fact when uh, we went to Vinales which is the largest tobacco uh, plantation area in Cuba we had a demo so hopefully I can put some of the visual here but you can see the cigar roller he is rolling very very tightly and bunching up together the filler and it needs to be tight enough that you are able obviously to draw from the plant but not loose enough that you're not smoking anything at all and then the second layer is the binder so the binder then obviously binds the filler together so none of it slips out and so that it is secure and then after some time, the wrapper layer goes on. That's the third and final layer. And obviously the wrapper makes it look very nice and neatly presented. They make it into its shape. They have different ring gauges to make sure each of them is quality controlled. And then outside of that, obviously you can see here the manufacturer's label. And here obviously is the Cohiba. Now, usually you'll just see the one label around the last third of the cigar as you smoke it but some, if they're limited edition or have been aged to a certain maturity, you may find another label around as well. And I personally love collecting the different labels. I've created pages of different kind of like scrapbook cigar rings and it looks really, really cool. And following on from the composition then, in terms of where the cigar tobacco actually comes from, like I mentioned, the majority of it is grown in Latin America, predominantly Cuba because of the climate, it's incredibly special. Other countries are known as pretty much new world cigars. So that can be, like I mentioned, Honduras, uh, Dominican Republic, there are also some other countries in Latin America that do it, but obviously they need to have a tropical climate, but it's not super, super damp all year round. I've heard in terms of the new world, you can even get some that are made in parts of the US and Europe, i.e. the hotter climates. But obviously, I think a lot of people realise that there is a lot to the way that the tobacco is grown, and that is largely attributed to the climate. That's why everybody prides the Cuban above all else, and then the New Worlds. And what is also worth noting is that the main distributing company in Cuba, it's manufactured or at least distributed by a company known as Habanos. So you'll be able to see a Habanos sticker across most boxes. So you can rest assured that you are smoking an authentic Cuban because only the ones that are approved by the Cuban government and are manufactured obviously in Cuba according to their standards will bear that label. Other ones will have from the new world their own country export stickers on them. I'm not super familiar with but certainly you can't go wrong if you buy them at an airport or an official store they will bear the logos. And so it's probably worth me getting into the reasons why I started smoking cigars because it was by no means an overnight decision. I think there's like four main reasons reasons and the first one that I'll talk about is something that I mentioned earlier in the video and that is around the composition of the cigar itself. I know that a lot of people will be concerned about the health implications or the fact that it might have nicotine in it because of the tobacco but I feel like there are a lot of misconceptions about cigars especially if you don't know how to correctly draw and enjoy the cigar. Obviously you do not inhale the cigar because it is pure tobacco and it will be damaging, if not more damaging than the likes of cigarettes. However, actually, if you follow all of the rules on etiquette, etc., then it shouldn't be that much of an issue. And I also don't smoke it enough to have an issue. And furthermore, the actual content of nicotine, which is the addictive stuff in the cigar, when they make it, we've actually seen in the demos as well when we were in Cuba, they strip out the stem of the tobacco leaf, which is where 95% of the nicotine is housed. And provided you don't go crazy and chain smoke cigars, which I think personally would be quite hard to do, it does get a little bit heavy. Honestly, I think it would be very difficult, A, for you to get addicted per se, 
and B, for you to actually get lots of health risks. This therefore makes the cigar purely for the pleasure and for the ritual of smoking it. Sure, it can be very relaxing to smoke a cigar, however, it is by no means addicting. It doesn't have the chemicals and all the other nasty additives that cigarettes do. Now onto my second reason for why I smoke cigars, and that is related to the first one, and that is around the craftsmanship. I mean, even before I went to Cuba and saw with my own eyes how cigars were made and rolled, I had watched a lot of videos and did a bit of research as well online and spoken to a lot of the kind of cigar connoisseurs in the cigar lounges that I would frequent. It was just super eye-opening and it's a real industry, not just because they need to do it to make a living, but these people really enjoy what they do. There's just something really elegant and classy about cigars and there's just this etiquette that I feel is lost a lot, especially in today's culture where people are, you know, conversely twerking on the street and chilling pints down at the pub. One cigar roller has created basically a work of art and these therefore need to be treated with respect when you smoke them. And that's why I guess they are so expensive and also I guess classed with, you know, high society. Now onto the third reason why I decided to take up cigars and that is around the taste. Now I'm sure some people will have mixed opinions about this because I know a lot of people will say these things smell like smelly socks. <laughs> That's actually how you denote a good cigar, might I add. I personally like the taste of the more mild to medium bodied cigars. I just worked out that is for me. I've also worked out the size that work for me. So this is a Cohiba Robusto. I also enjoy the Corona or Petite Corona sizes. I've worked out the brands that I really enjoy. I worked out the flavor profiles that I like and also even the pairings and things I can have with drinks. They smell a lot less offensive than the likes of the cigarette or even things like cannabis. And I just really enjoy the overall aroma and trying new flavors out. And you know, I feel like that's what people do with wines or gins or even coffee beans. And then the final reason why I took up cigars and why I love them so, so much is because of the whole ritual. And I mean that from start to finish. And I know some people will find some of the etiquette involved a little bit cumbersome, but trust me, when you have done it a few times, it becomes like second nature. I love that you have to carve out in your busy, busy days where you're rushing around and doing X, Y, Z, that you have to allocate at least like 45 minutes to an hour to enjoy your cigar. And I feel like that's where I do also my most thinking. I have my most profound, deep and meaningful chats with people. And it just gives me a time to just step away from the computer, step away from the phone and do that kind of detoxing that I've even mentioned in the past videos before. Now having done the Cigar 101 and why I enjoy smoking them, it is probably worth me showing you the vast collection. The net worth of which, if you were to buy it retail in the UK, would be in the several hundred pounds, I imagine. So big disclaimer, the only reason this collection exists is because it was really, really cheap buying it in the airport and also in Cuba. But I just wanted to show you them just so it gives you a little bit of inspiration if you don't know where to start. Technically, I've got two humidors here. There's one that says Cuba on it. This one's actually obviously bought, surprise, surprise, in Cuba. And we've got a collection of the unbranded and hand rolled cigars from the actual tobacco plantations in Vinales, which is the most well known and biggest exporter of cigars in Cuba. And I've got like little sachets for humidity control. You've got to make sure that the humidity is very tightly observed so that they don't dry out or get super, super damp as well. Um, but these cigars are actually so special because obviously you can't buy them in any country apart from Cuba in that specific plantation by a specific farmer because they're allowed to keep 10% um, of the tobacco that they produce, 90% goes to the government of course, the last 10% they have for their own enjoyment or can sell for themselves privately. I think one of them was actually one that he rolled in front of us so that's super super special he let us keep that and we just decided to support the farmers there and buy some more because we really enjoyed the flavour profile. It's a little bit sweeter actually than some of the other ones. They also actually created I think some sort of broth 
or spray made from natural ingredients like vanilla, I think some also citrus fruits as well. And they made it into spray that they then spray on their leaves and that's just something they do, which means it has a very sweet profile. And we learned a lot of cool things to do with these cigars. So you can add honey, you can add rum to the end of them before we smoke it, those kind of things. So it's quite sentimental. Now moving down, actually, we have something a little bit different. And the packaging looks a little bit funny because to be honest, it had a garish anti-smoking sticker on it. And um, I've tried to peel it off because I wanted to see the beautiful box underneath. This is the Flor de Silva. These are Honduran cigars. And actually, while we're on the topic, there is the garish anti-smoking sticker. This was purchased at the Charles de Gaulle airport uh, tax-free cigar counter. And this was honestly, if you can believe it, just like the less garish picture. They had ones of like lungs and livers and all kinds of organs that just did not look pleasant. Let me show you what we have inside. So these are the siesta size and these are I guess like a half an hour smoke or 45 minute smoke and this is just the siesta size from the Ford Silver. They are I think medium bodied I would say. They're nothing super super wow. In terms of the flavour profile is it one that I gravitate towards and buy another box of? Mm, maybe not, but they were a great price. And if you can buy them duty free as well, then you'll make a great saving because I think these came out to around like six euros per cigar. And they come in different individual wrappers like this one. So it's quite nice if you want to give it as a gift or put it in your, your bag or something and you don't have a cigar pouch. Onto the most exciting box of all. And this is a humidor that I bought actually towards, I guess, the, the top of the year because I guess I realised that this was going to be quite a, an expensive and long time hobby. But this box, I think, can hold between 50 to 70 cigars, depending on the size. And it looks really, really cool. And it's kind of mahogany um wood design and as you open her up on the top we actually have a tobacco leaf it still has a smell but um this is one that the um the cigar plantation the tobacco plantation in vinales they gave us what's probably worth noting is that we have four all four of the major big uh cuban cigar brands in this humidor which is so awesome to have because they are usually in the UK and in other parts of the Western world, incredibly expensive. I mean, you're talking about one stick go from, you know, for the more reasonable ones, like 20, 25 pounds, up until some of them go to like 70 or 80 pounds. Certainly, I know the Cohibas do, so the fact that we have like, what, 15 in here is incredible. You do the math if it was on retail. So if you think about a tobacco um, plant, the top part, I believe, is the most uh, full-bodied. So that's where the Cohibas and the, I think, Monte Cristos might be. And then you've got the middle one where the Monte Cristo plus the Partagas also sit. And that's medium-bodied. And then you have the final one, which is where the Romeo e Giulietta's are also found. So, I mean, some brands then also mix up the different parts of the leaf to have blended versions. But... Those four brands, the Cohiba, the Monte Cristo, the Partagas, and the Romeo and Giulietta are the biggest ones. So here are the four cigars in question. So in order, this is the Cohiba, this is the Monte Cristo, this is the Partagas, and this is the Romeo e Giulietta. The one fun fact that Winston Churchill enjoyed the most. We also have some other ones. So let me see here, we've got some Hoyo de Monterey. We also have an H. Upman, which is a blended cigar. Those brands are blended. Got a punch. Some interesting shapes, might I add, the torpedo shape, the cone shape here. This is not one, as you can imagine, that I smoke. This is definitely one for my boyfriend. You've also got the Diplomaticos Havana. Actually, you've got a few torpedoes. You've got a San Cristobal as well. Another H. Upman. And then some different sizes of Cohibas. For the eagle eyed amongst you, you may have spotted these unbranded cigars. And you can tell actually if I compare it to the um, 
other unbranded cigars. So let's just do one for one. This one was actually purchased from uh, Trinidad, which is also a lovely place, a uh, beachy place in Cuba. They look totally different. I've never seen cigars like this thin before, but super rote smoke as well, very, very light. And these were bought actually at a plantation there that sold also coffee and honey and things. So it's quite nice to have a little bit of local history. And actually just something I really quickly forgot to mention in, t in the collection is actually one that I just bought from London, actually from a, new, a day out there. And this one is from the Ritz. This is actually technically a new world cigar. Obviously the Ritz in London, I mean, hello, no tobacco will grow in London, but this one actually is one that is commissioned for the Ritz. It looks like a little uh, Frankfurt sausage at the top, which I think is rather cute. Aside from that, this is probably the only one that I've bought in the UK since that Cuba trip. And then I guess just to finish up, obviously you've seen all these different boxes keep it in a humidor there's a temperature regulator here we've got the humidor uh, humidifier sachets and we've also got a drawer here with all of the different lighters matches cutters and all that kind of good stuff with all that being said i will leave this video here if you have any other questions or indeed broader topics that you want me to cover about cigars let me know too because you know it's rare to find other ladies or luxury lovers out there who enjoy this side of the finer things in life thank you so much for sticking by such a long video i hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting and i will catch you in my next one